Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today what we're going to do is we're going to use Excel to determine what the rate order and rate constant of different reactions are. So if you take a look down here, you can see that we have integrated rate laws for zero order reactions, where we have the concentration of our chemical species being equal to the initial concentration of our chemical species. That's what this little zero means there. Minus kT, k being our rate constant and t being time. And then we have another equation for our first order and another equation for our second order reactions. Importantly, if we plot our concentration or some version thereof versus time, we'll get a straight line under different circumstances for the different types of reactions. So for example, if we have a zero order reaction, we'll get a straight line when we plot A versus T. When we plot the concentration of our chemical species versus T, that'll give us a straight line. On the other hand, if we have a first order reaction, we're going to have to take the log of our concentration of A and plot that versus time. And if that's a straight line, then we have a first order reaction. Lastly, if we plot one over our concentration versus time, and that's a straight line, then we know we have a second order reaction. So this is how you can use Excel to determine the rate order and rate constant of our chemical reactions. What you need is a set of data of concentrations at different times for your chemical reaction. So let's go ahead and take a look at doing this in Excel. So here in Excel, what we have is a set of times for our chemical reaction and a set of concentrations. And I've also put over here all of our different uh, equations that we're going to plot. So we're going to plot the concentration as y and the um, time as x. And if that's a straight line, we know we have zero order and so forth. The log of concentration versus time, if that's a straight line, we know we have a first order. And lastly, if we have one over concentrations versus time and that's a straight line, we know we have second order. I think this will become a little more clear once we actually do an example. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put in the times and the concentrations, so you should do that. And then I've labeled the columns times, concentration, log of concentration, and one over concentration. And now we need to do a little math. We need to manipulate our concentrations before we can generate the plots that tell us what rate order they are. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the log of our concentration. So I'm going to write equal sign ln, open parentheses. And then I'm going to click on the box with my first concentration. And that's going to give me log of B2. And what that's going to do is just simply take the log of that number. Now I'm going to repeat that operation down this row. So I'm just going to click on that first box. I'm going to hover over the bottom right corner of it and I'm going to drag it down and let it fill in the numbers. So now it's just done that same thing for all of these values. Next I'm going to do the same thing for one over concentration. So I'm going to write equal sign one divided by and then click on the concentration. And once again, I'm going to just drag it down. Now I want to generate three plots. And each one of these plots is like a test. If it's a straight line, that tells me what rate order that reaction is. So first, I'm going to go to insert to plot, plot my first graph. And I'm going to click on these scatter plots. And I'm going to click scatter. Now to select my first set of data, I'm going to right click on my chart. So you want to go over your chart area and right click and click select data. Now we're going to go to add to add a data series to this graph. Now we'll see series X and series Y. So we're gonna add our X values, and this is gonna be for our zero order test. We're gonna test and see if it's zero order. And that means we need to plot, for our Y values, we need the concentration of A. And for our X values, we need time. So for our X values, we're gonna go ahead and drag time, and the time is always gonna be your X values. And then our Y values, we're gonna click on this box, and we're gonna drag and drop over our concentrations. And you can see actually the right away that that's not a straight line. So that tells you, hey, this is not a zero order reaction. Just to keep track of which one I plotted here, I'm gonna go ahead and put in this chart title, concentration, first time. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna repeat. Now I'm gonna do a test for first order. And if it's a first order reaction, then when I plot log of concentration versus time, I should get a straight line. So once again, I'll go to insert, Scatter, scatter plot, right click, select data. I'm going to add the series once again. This is going to be the same process three times in a row. For my x values, once again, I want time. And now for my y values, though, I'm going to want log of concentration. So I'm going to drag over those log of concentration. And this is going to tell me if, first, if our reaction is first order. If we get a straight line, it is first order. And that maybe looks sort of straight, but maybe you're not sure. So let's go ahead and plot the last one, and that's going to tell us for sure. All right. 
So here we're going to write in log of concentration first time. And I'll put first order test. If it's straight, we know it's first order. And here I'll go ahead and add second order test or zero order test. All right. So now I'm going to once again right click and click select data. I'm going to add an X series. And as always, X is going to be my time. And I'm going to add a Y series. In this case, it's going to be one over concentration. And now I can think you can tell that where before you might have thought, oh, this was sort of straight, you can tell that this is a perfectly straight line. And so we're going to put one over concentration first time. And so now you can see that I have all three plots here, and the one that's clearly straight is one over concentration first time. And that tells us that this is a second order reaction. So I'm going to put second for our rate order. We know that this guy is a second order reaction. Okay, but what if we wanted to determine the rate constant k? How do we do that? Well, notice that I've plotted a y equals mx plus b line here, and my y values for second order reactions are one over concentration. And my x values are time, and that makes my slope like k. And so all I need to do if I want to get k is go ahead and add a trend line. And I'm going to click display equation on chart. So the way to do that is right click on your data series, click add a trend line, and then click linear and display equation on chart. All right, so now I have this equation here. And that equation is y equals mx plus b. Notice the slope here is 0 0.0614. And since that's equivalent to k in my second order equation, I know that my k is 0 0.0614. Lastly, because it's a second order reaction, I know that's per molar per second. So now I've determined k from the slope and rate order from which one makes a straight line. One quick note here, k is always your slope, for second order, you can see that it's positive k. But for zero order and for first order, it's actually negative k because of that negative sign there. So when you run this same procedure, if you get out zero order or first order, if you want k, you have to take the negative of whatever your slope is. All right, now I've gone ahead and plotted a second set of examples over here. And I went ahead and plotted them for us so we wouldn't have to take much time thinking about it. And here, we can see that once again, we have three separate lines and our one over concentration first time is once again the straight one. And so that means that once again, we have a second order reaction. And so if I want to figure out what K is, I'm gonna go ahead and click add a trend line. And I'm gonna go ahead once again and click display equation. And now I see, okay, it's second order. And it has a K that is equal to the slope, and it's 9.0995. And again, it's per molar per second. So the only thing that's going to change if you repeat this and you get a different order of reaction is if it's zero order or first order, you're going to have to multiply k by negative 1. And your units for k change depending on the order of your reaction. So that does it for this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions, please ask them below. You can also check out my channel to see other videos. Some of them have Excel and some of them are just chemistry videos. And uh, you can go ahead and subscribe to receive updates about future videos. Thanks for watching.